Now, talking of turbulent times as Prince William was, the threat of higher mortgage bills is making headlines this morning, with the Bank of England expected to raise interest rates tomorrow. Well, Financial Times consumer editor Claire Barrett is right here with us. So interest rates expected to go up again. I don't suppose that's a surprise, really. How is that going to affect us all, though, Claire? Yeah, so this will be the eighth consecutive rise if they do mm. put rates up tomorrow. And it's also expected to be one of the biggest single movements since 1989. So people in the city, they're expecting interest rates to rise by three quarters of a percent. So the base rate would then be three percent going forward. So right. when you take out a mortgage, your interest rate is normally a little bit higher than what the Bank of England base mm. rate is. So, of course, that's going to be worrying news for yeah. all of us with mortgages, especially people on floating rates. My advice is always, if you have got one coming up, remember, you can start to renew and look for a new deal six months before your current fix expires. So right. get in there and speak to a, to a broker if you're worried. But this rise that we're expecting tomorrow, in the aftermath of the mini budget, it was expected that interest rates could have gone up by as much as one and a half percent yes. at this meeting because there was so much flux in the market. So the good news is that's all calmed down. Right. But things are on the rise. For those of us with a bit of cash, <laughs> the irony, of course, is that fewer and fewer of us have got any cash mm. to put in the savings account at the moment. But the good news, Lorraine, is that rates on those are absolutely flying up. And I'd expect to see more increases if we do get a rate rise tomorrow. Very easy now to get 3% on even quite large sums of money and perhaps 5% on special deals from high street banks. So around £260 billion is in accounts at the moment, paying no interest or very, very low rates of interest. Mm. So if you're gonna do one thing this weekend, find your savings account, transfer it so you can get a better rate on that money. Yeah. If you're lucky enough to have that, you can do if that. I mean, that's yeah. that, that, and you, we absolutely should, because oftentimes we don't, we don't do these things. Now, Christmas is approaching. We have to be really vigilant, as you know, about scammers. Um, fake loan websites, this is Horrible, isn't yeah, it? it's really, really horrible. It's it's targeted at the kind of people who can't borrow money from a bank, can't borrow money on a credit card, mm. and they'll see a link online or a banner or a pop-up advert that will say that they can borrow a lot of money at a very, very low rate. So right. it kind of looks too good to be true, but they're in a desperate situation because they want to borrow money to pay for Christmas. So mm. they very, very quickly go through the process, and then at the end it will say, you have to pay an advance fee or an admin fee before you can get your money. So they pay, you know, a few hundred pounds often, right. but the loan never arrives in their, web, in, their, in their bank account. And then they look into the website and realise actually it's a fake. It's just a front oh, for a criminal organisation. And they've lost the money. Very, very hard then and to, targeting to, people who to have, get that back. And targeting people who haven't got the money yeah. in the first place, which is why they're doing that. They're so cunning, so, so cunning. They really are. And they've been targeting as well dating sites. Now this is really yeah. awful because that's, that's personal information mm. and, and mm. all of that that's being that's been abused. But again, scammers are absolutely adept at manipulating yeah. our emotions. So our desperation to buy friends and family Christmas presents, that's coming from a good place, but they're coming from a bad place. And it's the same with dating websites. They're targeting older people on dating websites, so they're not quite as savvy with the dating game. And right. also they're more likely to be, to be lonely. Now, we know that loneliness is a bigger problem the older you get mm. the things to watch out for are if people want to take the messaging offline very quickly dating websites can sort of keep an eye on things through their algorithms if you're messaging each other through the dating website right but if people very quickly want to go to whatsapp or some kind of private messages that should ring an alarm bell uh -huh. Also, if somebody looks too good to be true in their dating profile and the picture, you can do what's called a reverse image search. Just write it down and look it up on the internet. OK. You could take their profile picture, do a reverse image search, and it will show you where else on the internet that picture might appear. Because uh -huh. people who fake these profiles will often take a picture of just a random guy or, uh -huh. or woman from a Facebook profile, put it on the website. So if you do have any kind of reservations, even get a younger relative to, to help you do uh -huh. that, just to make sure that you are talking yourself. to who you think you are. And the dating websites also need to do more, frankly, to They do, down to police comments. it. You're, you're absolutely right. Because it is hard. I mean, even for somebody as savvy as you, it's hard to spot the fake, you know, from what's real. It is. So I got a text the other day, and my golden rule always with text containing links is never click on it until I've done a bit of investigation. Right. But this was a really clever one because another way that our behaviour is, is changing is that we're using our phones to pay for things rather than using bank cards. Yes. So I have got an Apple phone, I've mm -hmm. got Apple Pay. There's a 50-50 chance if a scammer sends you a text like this saying that your Apple Pay has been 
disabled, you can't use tap and pay on your phone. Oh. If you don't take your bank cards out of the house with you, and that's the only way you can pay for things, they get that magic ingredient of panic. You know, I've got yes, to do something quickly yes. or I'm going to be stranded. I won't be able to even get on the tube. So you can tell from texts like this, the link is not quite right. Mm -hmm. Also, whenever Apple or the Android services contact you about like renewing a subscription for an app or something, they always email you. They don't send texts. Right. So very quick Google mm. could s tell me that this was part of a big scam going around. But for the scammers, 50-50 chance, whether you're Apple or Android, they're going to get you. If they've got to guess what your bank account is, yeah. it's much, much harder. God, it's terrible, isn't it? Also, fake texts from the government yes. about, now about energy bills. Again, this is really, really slimy and horrible. Yeah. Now, this is the biggest scam going around at the moment right. because everyone wants to get their hands on their money, but not everyone is aware of how that £400, um, the energy grant that we're all entitled to, it automatically gets applied to your energy bill. I can't right. say that enough. You don't need to apply. You don't need to, to do anything. You'll get the money. But scammers know that we all are worrying about of our course, bills. Of course. And we're highly likely to click on a text that says it's from the government or says it's from Ofgem, the energy regulator. So there's lots and lots of those going around. They're using that to fish our details, to get our bank details, our names, our dates of birth, things that they can use to come back later hmm. for a bigger scam. Now, the only people who do need to do something are people who are on prepayment meters, the sort where you top up with your car at the local news agent. Now, sure. your £66 a month, you'll get sent to you through the post as a voucher if you've got one of those card top-up meters. Mm -hmm. There was a very worrying story earlier this week that half of people who are entitled to those are not cashing them in and they don't realise perhaps that they expire within 90 days of being sent out right. or it could be that your landlord if you're renting a flat has got the meter in his name or her name mm -hmm. at another mm -hmm. address so they might be being sent your voucher so right. you're entitled to that £66 if you haven't had one through for October then start asking questions but it will come through the post and you'll need to top it up it will not be a text. It will not be a text. For goodness sake, don't do that. Claire, thank you so, so much. We've just sadly, we've just got to be on our guard. We have. At all times.